local news, politics, business, sports, arts, music. Mike and Marty on the team. Mike and Marty. Mike and Marty. Good morning, Rockingham and Bellows Falls. It's Mike and Marty here. We're here on the feed. It's February 8th. Today we're going to be uh, meeting some people from the Rich Earth Institute from Brattleboro, and we're going to be talking about a recycling program that they're working on. Uh, but first, Marty with local events. Local events. So this week at the Bells Falls Opera House is the movie Plane. I don't have an actual um, graphic. <laughs> graphic for that because they seem to be posting them a little later than we need them. I think <laughs> it's a, I think it's about a plane. It is about a plane. It is about a plane. Um, yeah. <laughs> goes from February 10th to February 14th. But the classic movie tonight is truly a classic. It's The Sting. Ah, we can all remember the music from that. That's sponsored by Coda and Coda. Reminder that um, we will have David on next week, and we just thought it was very interesting that we had Rich Earth Institute here this week, and then we have David <laughs> here next week. David Stern from Wild Goose Players to promote You're in Town, <laughs> which yeah. is running March 24th, 25th, 26th. The 30th, the 31st, and April 1st. Tickets are available at the Bells Falls Opera House. And this, if you if you go and check out anything with the Opera House, you'll see this the staging. They've done beautiful staging for year in town, so make sure you get your tickets. The Ray Masuko Concert Series is moving on to, to the concert number two, which is the Steel Wheels, happening Friday, April 7th. Um, the most recent concert they had this past weekend with Dar Williams was a near sellout. In fact, I think it might have sold out. So if you are interested, this would be the time to get your tickets. Again, bellsfallsoperahouse.org. Ticketing is super easy. And then the next in the series, which is coming in, I'm not sure when, and it doesn't say it on that, <laughs> <laughs> is Chris Smither. Again, those tickets are up, up for sale and available. We just don't know what the, the what the fourth one's going to be. That's mm -hmm. still a mystery. Oh, it's hap actually that's happening Saturday, September twenty third. I guess I did do my research and I had it on my paper. If you're into a different type of music, then um, Smells Like Nirvana, which is a Nirvana tribute band, is coming on Thursday, May eighteenth, and I believe that is being put on by Brian Joy and PKs. Yeah, right, he was exactly. here a few few weeks ago and he was talking Hopefully. about trying to get some some more, you know, more variety of music to the opera house. And then reminding everyone to, I, actually I never sent you the graphic, but reminding everyone, <laughs> just realized because it wasn't in the, the list, reminding everyone to save the date for the Bells Falls Festival. It's Rotary and Wild Goose co-sponsored. It's going to be at the Waypoint Center. Um, we just decided on the two headliner bands. I think it's going to be pretty exciting. We're going to have some local talent doing kind of the warm-up things. It's going to be food trucks and beer and fun. And we hope to make it a, a, a big yearly event, not necessarily like Roots, but with that spirit of Roots mm -hmm, of bringing mm -hmm. folks into the town for food, fun, and festival type thing. Um, a couple of just side things, again, I don't have graphics for, but um, Next Stage down in Putney tonight is actually showing the movie Almost Famous, which I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so it came up in events, and I just thought I'd throw it out there. And then this Saturday, Eugene Friesen is going to be also at Next Stage. And if y'all remember when we had him on here, he is a super unique cellist. And if you've never seen Eugene, it's so worth going to see him. Yes, and he's going to be with Cecilia I couldn't remember Zabala, who he's with. I just looked it up quickly. Who is an Argentinian um, guitar player who oh. actually has a really unique seven-string guitar. Wow. And I've heard that this performance is just uh, something to see. I'm hoping to go myself. <laughs> but we digress a bit because we have Julia and Jamina, did I get, I get yes. that right, yeah. here from Rich Earth, Rich Earth Institute to talk about pea recycling. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> or pea cycling. P yeah. Have you coined your own? Like, is it, I wasn't sure. I put it in as pea recycling, but I yeah, thought maybe yeah. it's pea cycling. But That's our yeah. handle on all of the social medias is the pea cyclers. There you go. <laughs> really? People That's are neat. probably like, what's that? And that's what we're here to find out. Yeah. So, yeah. So, start from the beginning. You, this is not, br this is new to Bellows Falls, but it's not new to um, southern Vermont or actually new to the country. So, how yeah. did you guys, how did this come about and how did you get involved? 
Yeah. Well, so start off? sure. Yeah. Um, about a decade ago, um, our co-founders Kim and Ace, Abe uh, Noe Hayes met at a party, and we're talking about composting toilets. <laughs> and um, the rest is kind of history. They founded this institute to get um, a program going to reclaim the waste um, that our bodies produce every day as a resource. And they kind of wanted to start as a demonstration program here in Vermont and kind of connected to some movements that were going on in Europe to get this going at a larger scale at the same time. Um, and so uh, for about a decade now, we've been having this um, community scale urine recycling program mm -hmm. going that we'll talk about. But it's also kind of reclaiming an age old practice that people have been doing for centuries of just fertilizing uh, plants in your garden with the nutrients that your body right. produces. Because I was going to say, this, this isn't new, like Chinese, the uh, Asian countries mm -hmm. do, did a lot of that with, re, with uh, fertilizing rice, right, with um, urine. Yeah, they would capture what they called night soil. Yeah. Um, so they weren't really splitting it up in the way that in that we are. Mm -hmm. We're collecting specifically urine, but uh, night so soil was um, was really more feces or, or all, all of our waste, um, and it was highly sought after <laughs> um, for for the farmers. Right. And right. so it's it's not a new concept. We, our bodies, uh, we are, we are humans. We are we are part of this earth, and our bodies are creating nutrients that um, that the earth needs. Um, right. And so this is just a way of of capturing that, um, and and just I think a, a good thing to remember is that when we when we don't capture it and it goes into our um, into our sewer systems, which is sort of the, the status mm -hmm. quo, mm -hmm. um, those nutrients still are going somewhere, yeah, <laughs> and they're actually causing point. causing pollution right. where they exactly. where they end up, yeah. which is yeah. which is typically right for in this area in the Connecticut River and then eventually the Long Island Sound, yeah, yeah, um, and so they're they're bringing their, their pollution if they go in the waterways and their, and their resource and, if yeah, they go onto the soil. That's great. So. That's a really good distinction mm -hmm. because that's, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, I was thinking about Lake Champlain. It's all, dealing with all of that yeah. is a bit, it's a constant problem in Lake Champlain. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, so you're in Brattleboro then. Yeah. We're <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> um, we are, we are mainly our offices are in Brattleboro. Our mm -hmm. first urine recycling depot is in Brattleboro, um, and we and that's yeah that's where we sort of exist. Right. But yeah. a lot of our impact is actually well beyond Brattleboro, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which is really exciting. And so right now we're here in Bellows Falls. We now have a urine depot in in Bellows Falls, um, which we'll talk about a little bit okay. later and how to get involved with that. And then we also we do a lot of collaborations outside of. Brattleboro. We do cl collaborations with universities, um, with other nonprofits, and then we have a, a global summit. So, so we are most of our stuff is in Brattleboro, <laughs> but then we also we do expand beyond in different ways. If you want to add, if you want to add to that, yeah. Well, I think yeah. So our our um, kind of pilot demonstration project that is the the Brattleboro uh, Peace Cycling Program kind of serves as a platform for a whole bunch of different research that um, the Rich Earth Institute is doing. So we do mm -hmm. research in partnership with farms, um, with a bunch of yeah different kind mm -hmm. of agricultural questions about urine fertilizer and demonstrating its effectiveness compared to synthetic fertilizer and things like that. Um, and then we also have technical research that's going on about processing technologies and then social research about the kind of social acceptability and perspectives that different people have about it. Nice. Um, so it's, it's kind of the, the platform for all of that. Um, so yeah, our depot in Brattleboro is the one that's kind of been there for 10 years and mm -hmm. it runs on the generous contributions of local urine donors. We have about 200 folks down in Brattleboro who are contributing their nutrients to our program there. Um, and just this uh, past year, we launched yeah this new depot up in Bellows Falls, and so we're hoping to get kind of a new uh, community of people contributing mm -hmm. up here. So and how's, how's it going? I mean, do you measure in volume, or do you measure in number of people, or both, or? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. both definitely. In our first year, I think back in 2012, we collected about uh, 600 gallons or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, recently, we've been up in the 11 or 12,000 gallon oh, wow. range. Wow, that's really amazing. Year. Good for yeah. you. <laughs> and growing. And growing. Yes, and growing. Higher yeah. hopes every year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go through the there's there's steps and there's processes. So let's yeah. go through those to kind of explain. Give a little more context to what we're talking about. So there's a four-step process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so big picture once again is we're collecting urine and using it on on farms as a as a fertilizer. And so what we're seeing here is the four steps um, that it takes to really do that. And so the first is collection. We have to get 
to get the urine somehow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, there's always a lot of questions on, on how that. <laughs> yeah, we can talk a lot about that. <laughs> we can talk about a lot about that. And, um, and if you're interested in becoming a urine donor, re- reach out and we can get you set up in different ways of, of collecting and collecting urine. And we have some, some low tech to some higher tech ways of, of collecting, um, which we'll talk about also in a moment. And then we have, um, we have the, this, this big yellow truck that we drive around and we go to our depots and we pump out all the urine that folks have, have generously brought um, to our depots. Um, and then we bring that all back to our research center in Brattleboro where we pasteurize the urine, um, which really just means that we're raising it to about 80 degrees Celsius for 90 seconds and then it's pathogen free. Mm-hmm. So that's what oh, the pasteurization process is, um, which is a, a, um, a, a pasteurizer that, that our team built for this mm-hmm. purpose. Um, and, and then we are fully permitted to go and apply that pasteurized urine out on local on local farms as a Ooh. as a fertilizer. So that's sort of the big big arc right. of, of the journey of the urine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then so we have some slides that show the the ways that urine can be collected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to talk about this one. Yeah. So this is um, our little portable pea cycling collection unit um, that basically is a two and a half or a five gallon jug mm-hmm. connected to a funnel. Um, and it's been designed so that it's totally watertight and um, the different heights make it possible for people of different genders to collect using it. Right. And there are also accoutrements uh, for different collection um, uh, methods. So there's the toilet hat, which can fit under a toilet seat and then you can pour it into the funnel. There are also various stand to pee devices. Um, it's kind of a choose your own adventure mm-hmm. scenario. But the key is um, that um, once, you, once your container is full, there's a cap that just screws on so it's totally watertight. Um, um, thing that you can put in your car or some people even will strap it to the back of their bike and mm-hmm. bicycle cool. with their pea cycling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the, the kind of easiest entry option. Mm-hmm. So sort of the, the least expensive and the low tech mm-hmm. sort of version that works very well. But we um, also have high tech. And then we yes. go into um, more of the urine diverting toilet options. And some of these are, are more available than others in the States, sadly. Um, but uh, something that we're constantly working on. And so the, the Vosman EcoFlush um, is one that's actually currently installed at the Westminster West Library. Mm-hmm. So if you oh, wanted to, to take a trip up there, read some mm-hmm. books and, and contribute yeah, your nutrients, yeah, yes. um, you, could, you could use that, you can use that toilet. Um, and so these are ways that, um, that people have designed to, to capture the urine in sort of a, a toilet that people mm-hmm. are more familiar mm-hmm. with with mm-hmm. experiencing mm-hmm. so there's options. so there. would this be if you were redoing your house would this mm-hmm. be a commercially available option that you could say oh, i want to recycle my urine so you could go to a plumbing supply store and say i would like this and they would be able to i think you maybe want to come to us maybe not <laughs> <Yeah>. a, <plumbing laughs> <supply store. laughs> yeah. a little more um, specialized yeah though. a little okay. more specialized one All of right. the one of those yeah. is currently available in the states and one of them is, yeah. is not the the Bozeman is, is available here oh, and, the, okay. and the Lofin is That's not yet yeah. we actually have one at the at the research mm-hmm. center but we're Makes kind sense. of the only ones yeah but yeah. yeah so we're offering installations of these toilets and we actually have a grant to oh, do really? free site visits to anyone who's interested in an installation oh. and we'll come and check out your bathroom check out your basement where the urine storage would go and discuss various options for um, that may be something Ross might that be anymore. interested in doing. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Grants available. <laughs> Grants available. Yeah. Funds, funds available. Yeah. We also have um, a waterless urinal installation, which is another method, especially for like public bathrooms. Um, uh-huh. We have one at the Hermit Thrush um, down in Brown. Oh, really? So if you go to the bathroom What there, a perfect place to do it. Right? <laughs> <Indeed. laughs> Return beer here. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's great. That's yeah. ex- excellent. And then the next step is the big yellow truck, and I think we have a picture of that as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. There it is. Mm-hmm. So this is the truck that we drive around, and there's there's a pump that's not pictured in here, but that sits between the cab and the and the bed. Um, and so we fill that up with big containers, and we we drive to the various places where we have tanks of urine, either the depot or um, we have people, as Julia was saying, that have an installation in their home where they're collecting on oh, wow. site, so they mm-hmm. don't have to go to the depot regularly. Um, and and we and we pump out all the urine and, and we and we journey back to to the depot in that. So if you see us driving around, give us a, give us a wave. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty noticeable. Yes. How what is the uh, catchment area like? Are you all over Windham and Windsor County or? We actually, fr- from an environmental 
perspective, we try to actually have sort of a, a smaller radius because mm-hmm. we actually don't want people driving hours to bring to, us five oh, yeah, gallons of sense. urine because yeah, right, then it's, right. it's actually going to counteract the positive mm-hmm, benefits mm-hmm. environmentally. Um, and so we're, we, do you remember what our, like it's maybe like a 20 minute yeah. sort of radius But I think it also and, varies, like if you were going to come to Brattleboro anyway for yeah, your job right. or something, so it, it's kind of yeah. on a case by case basis. But yeah, generally in the Wyndham and Windsor County okay. area. Just curious. Yeah. <laughs> And then, then you have to treat it. That's where the pasteurization comes mm-hmm. in. Yes. And that's those are the, the pasteurization tanks or those are storage tanks? Uh, those are storage tanks. Um, and so what you see on the right is actually um, our original pasteurizer. We have sort of an upgraded one mm-hmm. now. Um, but that's our pasteurizer that is, is doing what I was saying, where mm-hmm. it's raising the temperature to 80 degrees Celsius. Um, for 90 seconds and it's remarkably efficient. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like it sounds like it's going to take a lot of energy, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's actually yeah. it's very efficient. Mm-hmm. Our, our, our colleague once calculated it at like less than a 80 watt light bulb to run. Oh wow. Oh, kind of like it's very yeah, efficient. Yeah. So like, um, and then the tanks on the right are, I forget which side it was on, but the tanks are the pasteurized right. urine just yeah. hanging out ready ready for ready for application. In the so spring. I think this answers my question. The question I was thinking this morning, I mean literally, mm-hmm. you know, you always say you are what you eat, right? Mm-hmm. So what you eat is what you pee. So mm-hmm. if somebody like the pasteurization process does that like say somebody I don't know didn't have like the world's best diet maybe they were on a lot of medications is that mm-hmm. the pasteurization like negates that it, it maintains the nutrients but I, I guess like like I would, well I don't know I, I, I was just curious is, is all pee yeah. created equal I mean <laughs> is all pee created equal or does it do you, I mean you, you, you talk about like mm-hmm. when you take certain vitamins it's like mm-hmm. well you don't need to take that much of that vitamin because you just pee it out so mm-hmm. does that like neutralize the pee so that any excess of anything is do you understand? I'm not I'm totally saying, right. I'm saying, I'm not saying this well. <laughs> it's a great question. So it's one to, of the most common how to, questions. How to, just, how to word it. Yeah. No, it's a great question. Yeah. yeah. So there's a few things going on. The pasteurization um, specifically is just to get rid of any potential pathogens. Um, so um, that's, yeah, pre- predominantly what the pasteurization is about. Um, as far as nutrient content goes, um, what is in your diet will impact like the nitrogen and phosphorus level of mm-hmm. your urine. So if you eat a higher protein diet, you'll have more nitrogen in your urine and it'll be a better fertilizer. Oh, um, but then the <laughs> pharmaceutical question is kind of a whole different yeah, can cool. of worms that Rich Earth actually did a six year research project with the University of Michigan and the University of Buffalo to look at the effects of, because there are you know pharmaceutical residues in your urine. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were looking at the effect of um, those pharmaceuticals when applied to Um, crops and what happens to the soil and the groundwater and whether they're present in the crop tissue. And basically what they found is that pharmaceutical um, compounds are kind of present in crop tissue at very barely detectable levels. So the stat they came up with is you'd have to eat a pound of urine fertilized lettuce every day for 2,000 years and you would then get back the same amount of caffeine that's in a cup of coffee. Okay. So it's very kind of minuscule levels. But still it's a better use, it's a better than it just going into wastewater. I imagine just going into, that's the flip side of it. Which I think is always really important to remember is like, if, if we're not doing this, what are we doing? And mm-hmm. where, where are those medications going right, right now? Yeah. Or, or where is the excess nutrients going? Um, and right now, the vast majority of wastewater treatment plants are not set up to actually take out any of the pharmaceuticals. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so those are going directly into, into the waterways and causing problems with there fish with fish. Stuff. Like yeah. I've heard that, exactly. or at least read studies mm-hmm. where that the, they could, there are trace elements of pharmaceuticals in fish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's one way or the other, I guess. Yeah. And we, and we do have some, some research coming up to try to even filter that out more um, before application, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, part, that's part of the research <laughs> game. Right? But yeah, the whole idea of getting caffeine in lettuce is really <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you might be no, on no, to something. Excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> I was just saying, you know, that might be get a way to get some people to <laughs> have their lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so you then, you then give it to farmers and they apply it, right? Yeah. And so, so some of the farmers we work with, we're doing this um, sort of in uh, in the scope of a research project. Mm-hmm. Um, so some will partner with us and, and um, be willing to sort of collaborate with us to use some of their land to, to ask these research questions and, and to do these projects. And then some are just really excited to fertilize with urine and mm-hmm. see really see the value mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. Um, my experience, and I'd love you to chip, chip in here too, is um, farmers are really 
uh, practical <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And they're not really perturbed by the by anything about the urine, the smell, or anything. Mm-hmm. And it's just like really excited to have the nutrients well, in a in a in a way that that their plants and, can use. Yeah. And is it technically like so? If someone's a certified certified mm-hmm. organic farm, mm-hmm. is this a, a fertilizing option is it certified yeah, organic I mean, yeah I mean it kind of I mean it seems like it would be but yeah, yeah there's there's a lot of so most of the farmers we work with kind of fall in the, the category of people who follow organic practices but aren't certified okay. mm-hmm. um, and largely that's because there isn't a like legal kind of category for urine mm-hmm. the only category that it can fall under is the category for biosolids which is what comes out of wastewater treatment plants and that you know has all kinds of yeah. issues with other contaminants mm-hmm. that urine doesn't have um, so it's something that we're kind of interested in pursuing as far as um, organic certification mm-hmm. for urine goes. But because um, right I mean, it just seems like yeah. it would be the ultimate in the ultimate in organic. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, but mm-hmm. but I know the laws, the laws, the way the laws define things and what people have to go through to be certified organic is mm-hmm. yeah. And we're lucky around here because a lot do practice the kind of organic anyway, just not. 100% certified. So when the farmers are using it, do they um, dilute it or do they concentrate it or are they just, is it just straight? Just I mean, letting it go. <laughs> well, yeah. I, know, I mean, uh, yeah. is there a way to, do they look at, is, well, I, so, so, like, do you, you know, like fertilizers are rated by the amount of whatever, you know, they're like a 10, 10, 10 or mm-hmm. a, like do MPK, you, yeah yeah, 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 do you, rate your urine that way is it like when it if when it comes out it's rated to the to the amount of nitrogen in it and the amount of, it is yeah it's, you're shaking your head yes yes lots of good questions in there yeah so which earth has actually tested our urine from our community program to determine mm-hmm. the npk um so if you go on our website there's a home use guide that has that um determination on it so you can um look that up for if you wanted to use your urine in your home garden uh-huh. Um, and so often we recommend to dilute the urine uh, predominantly just so that you can not over apply the nitrogen because right, then right. you'll burn the plants. If you have ever seen a dog that will pee in the same part of the, your yard over and <laughs> yeah, over again, yeah, that's yeah, an example yeah. of uh, yeah. too much of a good thing. Um, but uh, we do, so we do dilute a lot, most of our urine for mm-hmm. farms. Um, but we're also looking at the other side of it for concentration because from a kind of transport point of view, you, you know, when you're transporting be, urine, yeah. you're transporting a lot of water mm-hmm. and that kind of, those greenhouse gas emissions add up really fast. So um, we actually have a spin-off for-profit company called Brightwater Tools that's looking at concentration technologies and other technologies oh, to concentrate yeah. the urine at the building and then bring it to the farm where they can dilute wow. it. Wow. Like. And I, you said something in there that I, wanted, I don't want to lose, which is um, that we do have an entire, uh, part of our website and actually an entire webinar web mm, webinar webinar <laughs> web, <laughs> web web series web series <laughs> there's a word in there webinar yeah, webinar there we go a webinar um, series called you're in my garden to help people <laughs> oh, <amazing>. yeah, that <laughs> Julia, <laughs> Julia runs and yeah. and, and um, I highly recommend to like help people learn how to use this in their own sure. gardens to fertilize for themselves but that um, brings up the idea of availability mm-hmm. and so how do people get the urine to use in their garden. Yeah, they have to make it. So we're down. You don't get your you, the you urine that's donated. Could, but it's okay. yeah. We're down to would, two minutes. All right, yeah. sorry. So <laughs> oh we gotta I'm talk about Rockingham Depot. We gotta talk about Rockingham Depot yeah. and then yes. how to connect you guys and then we can we can go back. So yeah. Rockingham Depot, this is where so that's located at the recycling center. The recycling center, yeah, right, right here. Right yeah, here in and, yeah. and I know it's it's actually hard to that makes it look really obvious, but mm. it's actually hard to see if you're not. So if you're coming into recycle to the recycling center, and you're looking at the big huge building, it's on the left hand side, kind of like tucked tucked away there. Because I I know that that's that question came up somewhere I saw it and people were like well we don't even know where it is or where is it mm-hmm. and I went down there recently I thought oh it is hard to see this mm-hmm. makes it evi- easy because right. it's we, you know it's a good <laughs> close-up but so that's so anyone can they can have do they pick up those those five gallon how does that work yeah so if you contact us we'll kind of get you set up with your little collection we have unit. contact information um, and yeah you can just keep those in your bathroom until they're full and then you bring your full container to the depot uh, you can bring your pea cycling and your recycling at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a vacuum pump inside the little depot, so you don't have to do any kind of pouring or worry about that. You just kind of insert oh, a nozzle, and it'll yeah. lift up your Suck urine all in. up and away. Yeah, and we have a little, we have an annual piss-off competition <laughs> for our local urine donors. 
<laughs> um, and we announced the annual winner of various divisions that we have. Um, so you can definitely there enter you go, Mike. that. I'm just I'm thinking, well. I am seeing, <laughs> I am seeing a future time. winner. <laughs> a winner. So um, we are literally down to 30 seconds. So I want to really thank you guys for coming. Yeah, You're going to have to come fun. back, though, <laughs> and do when, when, especially when the piss off comes, because that would be just. I think it would be one. We'd like to promote it, but two. There's there's all sorts of news there. Oh yeah, I just oh, think yeah. there's a, there's so many um, interesting things about this, and in, in such a simple process that mm -hmm. hopefully we've intrigued people, and there'll be more questions or more people will get excited. Um, so we have run out of time. All right. <laughs> well, I want to thank you again yes. for coming on and and doing this and doing all the work you're doing. Yes. And Thank you. That's it pleasure. for us. And yeah. see you next week. Bye, community. Bye, again. Local news, politics, business, sports, arts, music. Bye, guys.